Greetings, everyone. Today on the bench is the TPA 3116D2 Class D Mono Board. The reason it's back on the bench is about a year and a half ago, I did a full review of the board. I was pretty impressed with this one because I've tested quite a few of these low-cost Class D boards and I found issues with just about all of them. For one thing, some of them had a lot of background hiss. Others had inadequate heat sinking. I remember one board had two small output coils which would get very hot. And there was a bunch of other problems. But this board checked all the boxes. I was pretty impressed with it. For one thing, at 4 ohms with 24 volt supply, I was getting over 50 watts of output. I think it was 51 point something. And if you think about it, 4 or $5, which you can get these things for now, with 50 watts of output, that is pretty impressive. Well, ever since making that video, I keep getting comments every now and then. In fact, I got one the other day asking me, why didn't I test this at 2 ohms? Because it should be able to do 100 watts. Well, I'm going to rectify that and test this board. However, there are some issues I see that may make this not suitable for using at 2 ohms, and I'm going to go through those right now. To start off, the TPA3116 is designed to be a stereo amplifier with two bridged outputs. However, they did add one feature to the chip where you can use it in bridged mono just by the way you connect the pins. So what they've done is set this up for you so you don't have to worry about anything to make this a mono block amplifier. Now paralleling the two channels together does not increase your output voltage swing what it does is double the current capability, allowing you to drive lower impedance loads. So the paralleled outputs now can handle a lower impedance load. So according to the data sheet, we should be able to handle 2 ohm loads, no problem there. However, that's the chip. Is it capable of handling that on this board as it's been designed? Well, the first issue I have with this board are the two diodes here. They're in series with the supply current. So if I put the meter on the positive supply terminal and on this side of the diode, see it zeroes out. And on the other side, I'll get uh, 0.564 volts. And the other diode is going to be the same. If I can get to... Hello. There we go. And the other side of that diode. So they paralleled the two diodes for more current handling. But here's the problem. Number one, they say M7 on them. And that is the surface mount of the ubiquitous 1N4007 diode, which is rated only 1 amp. So in parallel, we have 2 amps. Well, the thing is, when you run this amplifier with 2 ohm loads and you're getting 100 watts of output, the amplifier is going to need somewhere over 4 amps, maybe 5. That's well outside the capability of those diodes. You might say that music is dynamic, it comes in bursts, and I could agree with that in most cases, but some people like to play music at high levels, and they play that type of music with the long, strung-out bass notes. You know that hip-hop type music they use in car stereos with the long, drawn-out bass notes. Of course, they're going to be running the amp as hard as they can, and that's going to stress the heck out of those. You know, those diodes won't be able to handle that. Also, at that current level, being silicon diodes, there's about 0.7 volt drop across them. That means I'll have to dissipate 3 to 3.5 three watts. And that's a small area, and I don't see any uh, copper foil area fanned out for better heat sinking, you know, to conduct to the bottom of the board. And it is a fiberglass board. So it's not ideal for heat sinking. You know, that's a lot of power to dissipate in the small area. The reason for putting those diodes in is to protect in case somebody accidentally hooks up the supply in the wrong polarity. So why didn't they use a 
higher value Schottky diode, you know, it could handle more current and Schottky diodes have a lower vo uh, forward voltage drop and that means they would dissipate less heat. So that's one fail right there. That pretty much makes this not suitable for 2 ohm loads at all and pretty much at the limit for 4 ohm loads. The next issue is the heat sink. You know, it's barely bigger than my thumb. An amp running at 100 watts, being class D in this case, it would dissipate about one-tenth of that. So it would need to dissipate about 10 watts into this heat sink. Well, this heat sink is not capable of handling 10 watts with natural convection. It really needs forced convection. You'd have to add a fan. At 4 ohms, yeah, I, I think it would be fine. It would be dissipating around 5 watts. So no problem there. So what you could do is just, like I say, add a fan to blow air across this. And as far as the diodes go, just solder a piece of wire across that to short them out of the circuit. Just be careful not to connect the supply up backwards and you'll be fine. The next problem area is the output coils. This I can't test yet. I'll have to check when I'm running my test. Will these be able to handle the current at 2 ohm loads? You know, 100 watts of power into a 2 ohm load, that's going to require quite a bit of current. So I'll have to see if these coils remain cool or not. Well, I'd love to have one of those infrared type cameras. They're pretty expensive, but I'll just have to use my finger to see if they're getting warm or not. And last but not least, these filters, which consist of the coils and these capacitors, they're put on the output of these amplifiers to remove the switch mode base frequency. However, they are dependent on the load impedance. You know, if they size these to be used with an 8 ohm load and you put a 2 ohm load on here, it could impact the frequency response in the audio band, and we'll check that out as well. So right now, this board is not really capable of handling 2 ohm loads, but we're going to test it anyway at 2 ohm loads and just see what happens. Maybe something will pop. If anything would pop, it would be those two diodes. But, yeah, we'll see what kind of power we get and uh, if the other issues are of concern that I mentioned previously. Okay, I connected the amplifier up. Going to the supply here. Because the supply can only put out 3.2 amps per channel, I have it paralleled so I can get up to 6.4 amps. I also added one of these capacitors across the rails. Since with my other amp, the 501 amp, which I designed and built, I did get more power when I added a large capacitor. Even though we're running on a regulated supply, it still helps. However, I don't expect much because it already has the six capacitors across the rails, which total about 2,000 microfarads. But, yeah, we'll see what happens. So we'll start out with the 4 ohm load and see if we can beat that uh, 51.7 or whatever watts I was getting out before. And for signal source, we'll play the uh, sine wave tones from the music player through the preamp. Okay, we're getting a waveform here. We're only at 10 volts supply right now. So go ahead and turn the voltage up all the way to 24 volts. Okay, 24 volt supply. And there's clipping, turn out a clipping, 14.9, we'll say 15. We're getting 15, we're drawing 1.35 amps per channel. So that's what, 2.7? 15 squared divided by 4. Okay, so we hit 56.25 watts, so yeah, that is quite a bit of improvement over the last test. 
Okay, I paralleled the other 4 ohm resistor. Let's see what it does. Uh, what happened? Turn the power on first. It's not liking that too well. It's like some distortion. It's drawing uh, just over 4 amps. Well, let me get the thing set up here. It's clipping on the top first. Uh, hang on. It seemed to be uh, shrinking. Anything getting hot? It smells like something's getting hot. Yep, them coils are getting hot. Hard to, I really can't feel those diodes. That's where a, a thermal cam would be nice, but can't get my finger down in there. I sizzle the tip of my finger, probably. Let's try this again. Yeah, I don't like what I'm seeing. I see distortion. Uh, 12 volts before clipping. Just uh, just under four amps drawn. Let's see, 12 volts squared divided by two. 72 watts. Yeah, I'm seeing a stressed out amplifier. I, I just don't like what I'm seeing here with four ohm loads. So what would be the safe power supply voltage for two ohm loads? Uh, probably 16 volts. Let's see here. Let's back her out of clipping. About 8.75 volts RMS. Now drawing a little over 3 amps. About 3 amps of supply current. 8.75 volts RMS squared divided by 2 is 38.3 watts. So backing the supply voltage from 24 volts down to 16 volts, it really does cut your power. But yeah, it is safe for the amplifier. Nowhere near 100 watts, of course, or even the 56 watts we're getting at 24 volts. But it's, you know, it's just the limit of the circuit. Okay, we're looking at the frequency response starting at 10 to 100 hertz. And right there's 20. We should be at this graticule here. It's, it's almost there. Probably a input filter cap. Limiting the response a bit. Hundred hertz and then it recycles. Here's the 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. See, it's pretty flat. My music player breathes a little bit. That's why you see it going up and down. But we're starting to lose amplitude. We're only at 4.5 kilohertz. This is why 2 ohm loads is probably not ideal for this amplifier. Ten kilohertz, and we're about half the amplitude. Okay, it recycled, but man, did that roll off. Yeah, the output filters are not equipped to handle two ohm loads. It's really set up for eight. You can probably hear the whine of that thing as it's playing, so I'll shut that off. Well, there you have it. This board is not 2 ohm capable at 24 volts, so you're not going to get the 100 watts that they claim. I had to turn the supply voltage down to 16 volts, where the current is less. But in doing so, you lose quite a bit of output power. At that voltage, we were only getting about 38 watts. Also, with the 2 ohm loads, the frequency response took a dump. At 6 dB down at 10 kilohertz, which is pretty terrible. So it's pretty obvious that these output coils are meant for 8 ohm loads and not 
2 ohm loads. So, you know, that's the thing with these cheap amplifiers. You know, the chip might be capable, but the peripherals they put on there are not going to do the job. The engineering is poor, or they're just trying to cut cost. After all, these things are very cheap. So, you know, what do you expect you're going to get? What do you think about using that amp with 2 ohm loads? Do you think we should do that? I, yeah? Oh, he's thinking about it. He's going to stretch. Tell me about it, Snick. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. Well, that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching.